All right, then welcome back. All right, today we're going to be talking about acceleration, which acceleration is nothing but a rate of change in velocity. So it's how quickly you can speed up or vice versa, slow down, so to say. Usually when we think about acceleration, we think about that classic example of a car. And people will always say this, oh, my, this car, oh, as soon as I get a pin up, this car can go from 0 to 60 in 5.2. Well, what does it mean when somebody says their car can go from 0 to 60 in 5.2? Well, it tells you how quickly they're able to change speed is all they're telling you. And this is all this chapter is about. We've got two velocities here, if you notice, in this problem. Well, you've got one and two velocities. Well, you've got to have a way to tell them apart. Now, some books will, some books like to do VI and VF, and that kind of makes sense. Velocity initial and velocity final. That's not the way I do it. I kind of stick with a more of a physics approach, and I call this one VO, and the other one over here, I just leave it as plain V at this point. And so what it stands for is this. This one is velocity initial. And then this one over here would be velocity final. So that's what it means when I write V O and V. Now in the middle, this 5.2, when somebody says that, well, they're probably talking about 60. Or, excuse me, I don't know why I said the word 60, but they're talking about time is what they're referring to. So anyway, so all an acceleration is, is how quickly you can change velocity. How quickly you can go from 0 to 60, which leads us to the basic equation for acceleration. Acceleration in its purest form is nothing but a change in velocity over a change in... Ah, you goofy little... Pin, Miss Drug there, over a change in time. Now, I'm going to lie, I'm going to be a little bit lazy, so I will write this equation as just this. A equals a change in velocity over time. So we don't really think about like this change in time too much. So anyway, this is one of our basic equations. And if you're like really new to all things math and science over here, and you're like, what does this little delta sign mean? Well, let's go back to like, you know, or first grade when they teach you to draw on this kind of paper. It looks like the highway kind of paper. And so what I've actually drawn here is basically, ah, oh, let's see if we can undo that. That's horrible looking. What we've basically done is we wrote triangle V is what we've done. And this triangle is actually the Greek letter delta. And this delta sign only implies it just means change. That's what it means. You stick that delta sign in front of anything, it just means change. Put my E on there. So, all right. So this is one of our new equations. Acceleration is equal to a change in velocity over time. Now I'm going to rewrite this out into one more form. And that's going to be A is equal to V minus VO over T. And this is nothing but that equation. All I've done is wrote out what does delta V stand for. Delta V just means final minus initial. Now, I'm going to do something else, though. I'm going to kind of move into the world of physics a little. And just for the sake of making the problems easier... I'm going to solve this equation for V. So in other words, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by T and get AT equals V minus VO. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to add this VO back to both sides. I'm going to get rid of this VO. And so I end up with, by the time I like flip-flop sides, I end up with V equals VO plus a t and this is an equation i like to use because it's just a basic physics equation although once again it's the same as this equation whereas this equation up here is solved for a this equation down here is solved for v so anyway let's go ahead and kind of get into everything a little bit uh, make sure you are aware of one thing uh, the acceleration what the unit is the unit for acceleration 
is, and again, it's how quickly you change velocity. So I want you to look at something. You're dividing velocity by time. What kind of unit do you get when you divide velocity by time? Well, you're dividing by a fraction, basically. So that's the same as multiply by the reciprocal. So the unit is m over, now you got s times s. So that makes s squared. So there's your unit for acceleration. That makes acceleration very, very, very easy to identify from a lineup. So we know the things we're looking for. Let's go ahead and do a couple of example problems here. So here we go. First question says an automobile manufacturer claims its latest model can go from zero. And let's see if I get red on here. Can go from zero to 25 in seven and a half seconds. And then it tells me that that 25 means meters per second. So what is this telling me here at this point? Well, I know that the seven and a half, I know that that's a time because that's seconds. And it's given me two velocities. This one is my VO. I'm starting at that. And then I'm getting to a final of 25. And it says calculate the automobile's acceleration. So pick your equation out. So V is equal to VO plus AT. I'm just going to use this, our first kinematic in physics. And I'm just going to substitute now. This would be 25 equals 0 plus A times 7.5. Now, solve the equation. The 0 doesn't mean nothing. So 25 equals A times 7.5. The opposite of multiplying by 7.5 would be, if you want to get rid of it, divide both sides by, well, I made a little goof up there, divide both sides by 7.5. Bam! So that gets rid of the seven and a half. And now all I gotta do is if I've got a calculator somewhere, somewhere I've got a calculator. See if I find it. Dun, 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 dun. I think maybe this shows up on your screen. Twenty-five divided by seven point five equals ten thirds. Hit my S D button. Three point three repeating. So three Point three, and this is acceleration, meters per second square. There is my answer to this problem. All right, so that's one example done. Let's do this example B right up here. See if we can do that. I'm going to now erase everything else I've done. Get all this out of my way. Away from me. Go away, go away, go away, go away. All right, so I got that one cleared off. So now I'm looking at this one. I've got a little typo here. That should be seconds square right there. Same thing here. I'm going to fix those. Now I'm going to come back, and I'm going to identify. Look at all this. i got three numbers. It says a child goes down a hill. The child at the top of the hill is just sitting there. And then they slide down the hill, and they get faster and faster and faster, and they get to a, look at this, it even says final speed of 15.5. So it tells me that that's a V. And this 2.82, it tells me acceleration, but I don't even need to read it because that meter per second square makes this really stick out like a sore thumb. So all I'm going to do now, it says, how long does it take her to travel? So I'm looking for time is what I'm trying to find in this one. So let's write our equation. V equals VO plus AT. Let's see what we got. V is 15 and a half equals zero plus 2.82 times T. Zero doesn't mean anything. So 15.5 equals 2.82 T. Now let's go back, divide both sides by 2.82 to get rid of it. Let's pull out that Casio again. What do we got here? 15.5 divided by 2.82. And it looks like we've got, wow, 5.49 repeating. And you're probably wanting to do a sig fig. Uh, looks like we've got three sig figs for an answer. So this would be 5.50 seconds. 
Boom. So there is our answer to this one. All right, so far this is moving along pretty fast in this video. Uh, let's do one more. Now, this would be a good question. What if you actually worked a problem for 10th grade and the object, let's say it started out with like a velocity of 20, and then let's say that they slowed down and stopped. Guess what's going to be true about your acceleration in this one? Slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, stop. Your acceleration would be a negative number, if that makes sense. And you'll see that in a couple of these. I know that one of these, this, there's a problem down here about a kid slowing down on a hill. Well, we would go into this one and make the acceleration negative to account for that slowing down. But anyway, let's go work with the very last problem that we're going to work. See if I can erase do, 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 this other stuff out of the way. Uh, ah, all right. So now, 1970, Don, Big Daddy Gartlett, set what was then a world record for drag racing. He started at rest. That's an important word. He accelerated at 16 and a half meters per second square, which is about 1.68 times free fall. And that has nothing to do with the problem. So I'm just going to get rid of that. It's like a random factoid. For six and a half seconds. So let's do something. Six and a half seconds. Well, that's his time. This 16 and a half, what is it? Well, that's his acceleration. It's easy to identify because of that square. And then the fact that says he started at rest means my vo uh, initial velocity is zero. So let's write our equation. V equals VO plus AT. And all it wants us to do, it says find his final speed. So we're looking for that V. So V is equal to zero plus 16.5 times six and a half. And now I can get my calculator. 16 and a half times 6.5 and my final answer is 107.25 sig fig should be 2 so I'm going to round it to 110 meters per second and that is my final answer now watch out if you're doing these problems look out for little things like for example this problem has got kilometers per hour and seconds in it. Now, I'm not telling you what unit you have to use, but your units have to match. So if this is kilometers per hour, then you might think about changing that one to hour. Or if you know how, you might change that to meters per second. I don't care as long as they match. Ooh, this one's the same way. See, kilometers per hour meters per second square well them rascals hey look at number two i like it what is the change in speed look at what it asks you for that tells you which equation to use for number two if we go back to some of the first notes i wrote which i don't know where i wrote those notes but i'm sure they're wonderful notes here they are i gave you this little equation and what does the delta represent change so on that problem now for the big mystery i don't want to do those problems ah, i can't find anything there so here it's telling me on this problem i'm looking for delta v and if you look it's giving you a and it's giving you t so it's giving you everything you need to find that delta v anyway uh peace uh, and uh, I guess I'm out of here. Bam, bam, bam. Anyway, bye now.